Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you some SharePoint page design tips. So starting off, I'm going to actually go and create a brand new page. To do this, I'm going to go from the home page of my SharePoint site, click on new, and then click on page. Now, there are some default page templates. So if you're looking to style up your SharePoint pages, then you could take a look at some of the examples that Microsoft offer you completely for free. So the first one is visual. So you can see we've got a very large kind of header area up here. And we'll explore a bit more of this later in this video. Further down, we've got a bit of text and image on the right-hand side, a full width image, as well as these boxes here, um, using what I assume is an image web part because it's got some text over it as well. Um, and then further down, we've got another image as well. So there's a nice kind of visual layout. So this is really good if what you're trying to communicate to people is using a lot of images. If it's not, you might go with a bit more of a kind of basic text layout where we've got, again, a header option at the top. This is actually a different header. You'll notice to um, what is in the visual layout. Again, we'll take a little look at a couple of different options that we've got because there are more layouts for the headers as well that's available. Again, in this, we've got a, a kind of two column layout where we've got two um, columns with just text in here. Um, but I'm actually gonna start completely from blank. I'm gonna start from this blank option and build my way up. So I'm gonna select on blank and then click on create page in the bottom right hand corner. And this will present you with a page like this. Now, I see a lot of SharePoint pages that just look like this essentially. So they have a title, they have a bit of text, maybe some images, but that's it. They don't actually try and break it out and make it look any different. But as we've seen from those templates that Microsoft is offering us, we, we can make them look totally different. We can make them look very unique and stand out. So the first things that we're gonna look at is actually how do we change this header area? So across the top, we've got the ability to edit the, the header. So it's, it's a bit like a web part in the sense that it's got that little uh, pencil there that we can edit the properties of it. We can browse images and we can change the background image, which is gonna look different depending on the type of layout that we use. Uh, we can set focal point for the image and we can reset the overall design. So what are the different layout options that we've got for our header of our page? So if we click on this drop down here, we can see we've got image and title, which basically is very much like the default, but instead of it kind of sticking out, the, the title is sitting over the image. We've got plain, which basically means there's no background image at all. Now, this is sometimes used if people don't want to kind of take away from the information on the page. They just don't want any distractions. They literally just want a simple bit of text. Maybe this is part of a knowledge base or a wiki that you're building and you just don't want any distractions on the page. So sometimes that is used. Or it might just be that um, you don't have enough kind of branded imagery. Sometimes people don't like to use the Microsoft stock imagery. Um, they only use their own branded imagery and there's not enough of it to go around. So rather than having repetitive headers on every single page, they choose just not to have them at all. Um, we can have a color black. Now this is actually my favorite, but it's a little bit of a difficult one to work with. And I'll show you why in a moment once we start putting things together. Um, but you can see we've got a text area here. Um, we've got a much bigger image background. So if you've got some images and you wanna make it nice and visual, like that visual template that Microsoft was displaying, then this is the layout for you. The last one is overlap. So this is essentially where we started off with. So we've got the text which is overlapping the background image, um, which again is just where we kind of start off from. So the way we edit them all, so the way we add the titles, the way that we add the background images and edit any of the properties of them are all exactly the same, no matter which of the, the, the layouts we choose. So I'm gonna choose, as I say, the, the slightly more complicated one, uh, which is a color block, um, because I just I just really like the, the look and feel of this particular one. So. The first thing that we need to do is we need to add a title. Now, bearing in mind, this, this is the title of the actual page, um, and it's also going to be the title when, when you can't quite see it, the URL that's just off the screen, but um, in site pages, this is going to be the name of the page as well. Now, the reason why I say this gets a bit complicated is because this box almost demands like a lot of text. Um, so if I put into here to say, this is a page title. That's already a very long title for, for a particular page, but you can see that it almost wants to have more text like that to fill up the, this space. That's as far as we can go with it. Um, so that would be a very, very long title in, in that particular case. 
Um, so I'm just going to say that maybe this is going to be a kind of almost like an FAQ page. So I'm going to call this say how to complete an X Y Z form for a request or something like that. Okay. Now the next thing that you can do is if you click on this edit web part button across the top, you can see, well, for a start, we can change the layouts again. So you don't need to use that, that drop down. And you can see what that title would now look like if I was to go with the plain option, the image and title option, or the overlap option. But I'm going to stick with color block for now. Now, we've got some options here for alignment. So we could align this box to the left, or we can align it to the center. If I'm totally honest, I don't really like aligning it to the center. I do see people using it like that, but to me, it just feels like a bit of a kind of drop in the ocean in the fact that it's kind of just sat in the middle of the page. A lot of people nowadays have very wide screens and all of this is responsive. So it's going to feel even more stranded as a kind of little box in the middle of a page. Um, so I actually do prefer to keep it on the left hand side, if I'm totally honest. Again, it will slightly depend on what the background image that you, we change in a moment, depending on what we use there. That will also sort of help determine whether we center align it or not. Now, this next box is something that you, I think you only get actually if it's, I don't know, we get it in a couple of these different options now. I can eat my own words, but we've got this text above title option. So I tend to use this as a kind of label for the page, uh, maybe like what it relates to or a category, or let's say for example, that this is, a, I'm building this as a knowledge base or a wiki or something like that. And this particular page relates to a department. Maybe this one relates to HR, for example, or marketing, or sales. And now you can see it's changing this box every time that I change that, 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 that text above title. There we go. So now we've got our um, text above the title. I can choose whether I want to show the text block above the title, so I can just choose this to show on and off if I wanted to. You can also show the publish date. Now, this could be quite useful, again, if it was a wiki page or a knowledge article, just to show essentially when it was um, originally kind of published, because it might be that you create this page and if no one comes back to it after a year or two, then maybe the information is no longer so relevant. So people want to know when it was published so that they can act accordingly. Um, whereas if it's something that's going to be countless, sort of sorry, timeless information, um, maybe you turn that off because again, it makes it look like it's older than it is, even if it's never going to actually be outdated. The next box down here is the accessibility box. So this is where we can provide alternative text for people who are blind or have low vision. So you can briefly describe how this image is uh, relevant to the page. Now, if it is just for sort of decorative reasons, this background, we don't necessarily need to um, provide that accessibility text. But if it was something that was going to give a bit more context to the page, um, obviously we want to be inclusive and make sure that everybody that's using this page finds it as accessible as possible. So you can just untick that and you can provide a bit of a description, alternative text for your image here. If not, mark is decorative and we don't need to use that box. Okay? So, We've now got our, our title, we've got our um, sort of label, our, our text above the title. Um, now we want a background image. So we're gonna set the background image of this particular um, page. So if I click on this browse image option, again, we've got things like, we can see recent images that we've used. We can use a web search, which is actually powered by Bing. Now, I know it, it's, Bing is Microsoft, but to be honest with you, the web search not so great from, from Bing for, for images. Um, you've got OneDrive, so you can get anything from your OneDrive. This SharePoint site, so any images that were stored on the SharePoint site, you can get from a link, or you can upload your own options from your own computer, or something I really advocate for people to use is a stock image library. Now, I know I was just kind of like saying there that Microsoft's web search is terrible from Bing, but they've really brought it back and, uh, and balanced things out by giving us this stock image library. This stock image library is really, really good. There's hundreds, if not thousands of different stock images in here. And I know in a lot of my videos, I do bang on about this, but it is really good. And it kind of pains me to see quite often that people go out and they pay for third party stock image libraries to use images inside of SharePoint. When actually this stock image library is here, 
and you tend to find sometimes a lot of the imagery are very the same if not the same in, in some of the places that you, you're looking so use this and you can you can search it by color so if i was to search say say our brand colors was red i could look in here and find some different reds in here i think i'm going with a kind of purple color but let's say for example you can also look for context things so if i look for let's say office i can find real pictures of people in an office setting and things like that um I'm actually using kind of purple colors in, in this particular design. So I'm going to look for purple and that's going to find, so I quite like this actually, this is pretty cool. Unless there's going to be anything else which is going to stand out to me. Any different? No. In fact, actually I quite like this. Let's, let's go with this one. I think this will look good as a big image. So the good thing about these images are they're very large, very high quality. So they look really good. So when you put it into the page here, you can see this is looking great now. So I was saying before you could set uh, an image focal point. So by selecting on this, we can drag this around so I can find whereabouts in the page that this is gonna look best. Um, now actually I want more of the kind of purple in here. So I'm gonna drag this right down. So we've got more of that kind of purple kind of um, vineyard in the background of this. Cool, so there we go. Um, so that is the kind of set in the background image. The final things that we can then think about for this particular page is whether or not we want the page author to appear. Now, the next thing I'm gonna tell you, some people get a little bit freaked out by, um, but actually I would suggest don't worry at all about this, I'm gonna talk you through it. But first, I wanted to ask a favor. Please do subscribe to my channel and like the video. If you've got any questions at all, use the comments for you below. Also, go and check out the membership on my channel. So the membership allows you access to specific unique videos that are only for members. So you can see here, I've got a full SharePoint training fundamentals, which is a six part course, which is only available to members. There's also a how to build a SharePoint intranet, um, which is a three part series, which again is only available to my members. We have a polling area so you can request what new training courses you'd like to see. And there's also a members only Q&A. As my channel grows, I'm finding it more and more difficult to stay on top of everybody's questions inside of these videos. So we've got a dedicated um, Q&A area, which has got a priority answering um, board for any questions that you might have. The membership is only 99p per month, so it's not gonna break the bank and there's new content this is coming out on a weekly basis. Okay, cool, so let's get back into the video. So the final thing I wanted to mention then about these header sections was this page author. Now, you can remove it by clicking on here. Now, people tend to remove this, again, if it's going to be something which is uh, pages which have been created by a generic kind of SharePoint administrator who isn't necessarily going to be the main contact for this page if anyone's got any questions. You can also remove it if, for example, you don't want anyone to be contacted um, about the, about this particular page. Now, by removing this page author, you can actually even replace it with somebody else. So you can type in somebody else's name into this, and then that replaces them inside of that, that particular box. Now, some people get a bit freaked out by this. Now, this is what I was saying about people getting worried because people think, well, what about if someone wants to create something maliciously and make it look like it was me that created that page? That, 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 that isn't the case because actually we're only changing the kind of the aesthetic, the, the kind of um, the page um, sort of author in the front end of this. You can always see by going into site contents by the cog, going into site pages, like in a library view of the pages, you can see who originally created the page and who last modified it. So you can always see that. And actually that has no correlation between who's this, this kind of page author as well. So if someone did create something that you, you thought was unsavory or you didn't want them to do and they put out your name against it, um, you would always be able to see from the modified by or the created by columns who actually changed that page. Um, but essentially this page author box is more used for, say for example, um, these are Q and A's or FAQs or a wiki or knowledge base related to human resources. And actually there was a particular contact for this particular question. They might not have even created the page themselves. It might be a generic SharePoint admin, an intranet manager, 
comms manager, someone like that has created that page on their behalf and then they're putting that person's contact uh, there. So once they click on them, they can see their contact information, email address, phone numbers, things like that, which are going to pop up when they, they click on that to make it easier for people to contact them. Okay. So that's the page headers. Um, there's a couple of extra bits and bobs when it comes to page designs that's worth knowing about as well. So in terms of the pages uh, layouts, they're all made up of these sections. So by default, you get this one column width section, but we can add new sections by clicking on this little plus button here. Now there are some templates that we can use. So we've got here, for example, a three column image text. So this is now providing us the ability to add in images into these three columns with some text underneath. I would suggest taking a look at all of these different templates because it will make sure that you're varying the kind of types of pages that you're using and keeping it engaging and interesting for people. So again, we've got this one third left with an image, two columns, one column image, uh, uh, which is much wider, one third right image and text, two column image and text. So you've got all these different types of layouts that you can use to make your page look really engaging. Now, if you don't want to use their templates, you can also create your own sections and then build completely new layouts yourself. So we could add in, say, for example, a full... Uh, so uh, let me walk through them. So one column is just what we get by default. Two columns is that kind of two-column layout. So you've got um, content on the left, content on the right. Three columns, of course, it would be three columns. One third left just means that the um, box on the right-hand side is bigger than the left and vice versa, one third right would mean that you would have a box bigger on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. So essentially that is um, the, the different types of layouts that we can use. We can then add web parts into these particular layouts by clicking on this um, plus button on the right-hand side. And then we can see all the different web parts that we can add. Now I'm not gonna go through all the different web parts in this, but I would suggest take a look at the different ones because they will all um, essentially allow you to build different kind of functionality into your pages, engaging with different Microsoft products um, or embedding external things like Twitter or YouTube videos in there as well. So there's all different ways that you can add your content, but I want to make this video more about the design because I see a lot of the kind of layouts looking very similar, very default, very stock. But as we can see, we can change the design, the layout of the page in a lot of different ways. I hope you enjoyed that video and if you did please do like subscribe to my channel and go and check out the membership area for exclusive content thank you for watching